this video is for other people who like me have experienced down periods, feelings of depression, feeling lost, feeling kind of lonely, feeling apathetic, feeling numb, feeling worthless and even having suicidal thoughts. So first I'll, I think I'll go over my experience and then after that I'll kind of give you kind of what's worked for me and I'll timestamp it down the bottom so you guys can kind of follow along a bit easier. So I think I was first depressed when, or well my first depressive episode or whatever you want to call it, was when I was 12. And I remember I was in the shower and I had this disassociation episode, which happened quite a bit when I was little, where I, was, where I would think so much about life and about things that I would just lose the sense of my body, lose the sense of my identity, and it felt, it felt really weird. And one day I did this, I think it was towards the end of year six, so I was 12. And I just, after I had my shower, I just squatted down and just sat there, kind of still dripping wet, just for ages. And I remember my mum kind of was like, what are you doing? And then she was kind of like concerned, so she's like, oh, we we're going to wait till you graduate to give you this, but here's an ice red watch that you've been wanting for a while that we're going to give you as a graduation present. And sure that was nice, but like, I feel like there's some underlying problems there that I'm still kind of dealing with now. And I've had a lot of these depressive episodes throughout my years. Um, like even when I was 13 going into a high school, that was kind of a tough time for me, you know, like I said in my video um my biggest regret of my teenage years I kind of met this girl that was really had a big impact on my life but it didn't really I didn't really do anything about it because I had low self-worth and that kind of reinforced my identity and that's why I think I pushed her away but anyway I had when I was 13 I I cut myself and multiple times I tried starving myself not to live yeah I tried starving myself deliberately like I wouldn't eat much I wouldn't eat dinner you know I think there was a couple of days where all I ate was like an apple or something for the day and that's not really good for when you're growing you know and you're young and I was just kind of a real mess you know and I don't want to blame my parents, but you know, when you're a young child, you know, these things kind of have an impact on you and they um, can affect how you see and how you kind of react and deal with things in the future. And my upbringing was pretty good. You know, it wasn't too bad, but it was quite strict and it was kind of like conditional, like you have to do these things for us to like you. And it's kind of like, I often felt like I was in the way and I had to kind of just keep quiet and do do the right things to kind of fit in and do everything right. And as I grew older, I kind of realized that me doing things to make other people like me so that I can feel good isn't really a good way to live, you know. It's not really a sustainable way to live. So throughout my teenage years, I had several episodes where I just felt really down, meaningless, lost, you know. I just felt really dark. There was one point where I, so the biggest turning point was 2020, <laughs> of course. So I had spent two months in exchange from France from December 2019 to January, no, November 2019 to January 2020. And that was an eye-opening experience, you know, because I was very shy and introverted and I was very anxious and I didn't really do well over there, kind of struggled with it a lot and I didn't eat very well because I was so anxious. And then I came home, you know, I'd lost about five kilos of weight and we were going to move out of our house and we we're going to move into a bigger house. So, you know, it kind of felt like life was going to be moving forward and going well, but my parents ended up splitting up about a 
week after I came back from France, which is a bit of a shock. Well, it wasn't a shock. It was. I kind of, it was kind of shocking for me to hear it, but I wasn't really surprised to hear it, if that makes sense. And so after that, you know, COVID hit a couple months later. And at this point, I was kind of really alone. I didn't really have many friends, many people I'd talk to. You know, I kind of had cut them off. Because whenever I felt bad, I my natural reaction was just to retreat into myself and kind of dwell and mull in my feelings and stew in them, which is kind of a really bad thing to do, you know, because you don't want to be perpetuating this cycle. And when you're not, when I'm not um, talking with other people or being with other people, then, you know, it actually has an effect on me. And I tend to be more introverted, but people do make an impact. You know, it's very important to have a social kind of life. And so anyway, I kind of, stumbled through that you know through COVID there was many times where I kind of contemplated you know wouldn't it be better if I was just dead and at that time music was kind of important to me because I need to express something out there and I felt like I needed to do something and I felt so worthless because I was comparing myself to Daniel Johns who it, I was 16 at the time and when he was 15 he had released the, his album and the hit song tomorrow and I just was like oh I've done nothing you know I'm not worth anything I was kind of the thoughts going in my head even though it's not really it's not really true you know you don't have to do something great to be worthy of anything um but eventually I kind of got into working out and that kind of helped me to take care of myself a little bit more for a while at least and then, you know, I started to take more control of my life, but then I still kept having these dips of these down days where I would like fall off and just feel really negative and self-hating and just my internal dialogue was really, really bad. Like it was really hating on myself, and really aggressive towards myself. And then I had to move in with my dad and I kind of fell apart there. I lost all of my momentum where I was feeling good and then I realized I really wanted to move out because it was important for me to kind of gain independence and I thought I needed a better environment to live in and kind of find my way in the world because I was like an adult, you know, I was um, 18, 19. And so I moved, <laughs> I tried going to houses. I tried to book some houses in a bigger town just out from where I live and I didn't get them because I didn't have enough money and I didn't want to wait a couple extra months to save up all that money. So I decided, oh, if I go to uni, then it'll be a lot easier to get accommodation. And yeah, that's kind of my thinking. But then I ended up actually deciding to do this other uni way out in this other place way further out. And that was because I wanted to do the soccer program there. And I thought, oh, if I just do this, then all of a sudden I'll be this great soccer player. And then one step will lead to the other. And then my life will kind of come together and it'll feel, you know, kind of, have some harmony and it'll just come together and everything will be good and I won't feel bad anymore. Spoiler alert, didn't turn out like that. I struggled a lot because I was alone and I had no friends, I had no one I knew up there. And to deal with the stress of that I had placed on myself to try and, you know, I guess it was to try and please my parents, to try and do something to try and be something that would be accepted that would be worthy of that kind of thing you know I wanted to feel like I was doing something with my life and I wanted to I wanted to have the image of that I was going somewhere and being someone and you know I, I slowly came to realize you know that this wasn't working out it was degrading my health and I started binge eating to kind of deal with the stress of it I would gouge myself till I felt full and then eat more and I just felt so bad that I needed to numb it out, I needed to drown it all out with all that food and I was lucky enough that I had, did have a friend to kind of speak to throughout that and that really helped me but there were definitely times where I was kind of like 
I don't really want to be alive anymore and I had actually planned on taking my life I didn't take any steps towards it but I had it planned out in my head and since then I planned it twice more in kind of different ways when I've been in my down periods and I always thought that if I did something you know if I became a soccer player and then when I realized that that wasn't really what I wanted that I wasn't really doing this for me and that I wasn't over in this new city for myself and I decided I'd move back home and everything would be better and I was always hoping that things would be better things would be better things would be better there'd be an answer there'll be something there'll be something that's better there'll be something and it'll just all click into place and it didn't and I came kept having these kind of down periods and I recently had this one recently and last week I wanted to take my life because I just didn't want to be alive anymore and even though I was kind of doing these YouTube videos you know I was kind of seeing a bit of progress in it I was kind of you know, going along, I just felt like I wasn't growing anywhere and that I was searching for this lost cause that wasn't really there. And I watched Jordan Green's video on about his suicide attempt and that was enough to keep me, to turn me around, to keep me from wanting to do it. And I kind of realised, you know, oh, I've got to kind of do something about this because this is a terrible thought to keep having and if I keep going like I'm going then I'm actually going to end up killing myself so I kind of spent some time just on reflection and I realized that through watching YouTube through all these things that I had done I was always searching for something to find an answer to find a fix my problem I was waiting for something external to fix my internal kind of sort feelings and that kind of thing and no one can help you you know um, you know someone can give you insight someone can kind of help share someone can listen to you and that can definitely help but it's all up to you you know and you have control and I realized that I could make a change if I wanted to and that's a tough thing to do, especially when you're feeling down, but I just took slow steps and I kind of felt better, you know, like, I want to give you an answer, but there's like no clear answer. There's no set way that's going to work for you because none of the videos that I've given them have ever worked for me. And the thing is that you've got to find out for yourself because only you know what you're experiencing, only you know what you're going through, only you know your circumstances, all your dislikes and likes and that sort of thing. But what did help me was just taking some action to kind of identify what I wanted, where I wanted to go and just do the small steps that would get me there that would make me feel a bit better about myself. Because it's through confidence that we gain confidence and through effort we can build confidence so through effort you can become better at something and when you become better at something you feel better about doing it you feel more accepted and more respected and then you get higher self-esteem and I had grown up with low self-esteem because I was kind of labeled as smart or gifted and I didn't really have to try to do many things because I was I had a decent memory and I was open and curious you know, some people might think, oh, that you're so lucky, you know, you're so gifted, you know, that's just great. But it was a downside because it made me so freaking lazy. And only now I'm realized that I've wasted 20 years of my life not giving my all, not giving my full potential, not s testing my limits, not pushing my efforts, not actually dedicating myself to something and seeing where it will go and listening to the things that I want to do and that I love and dedicating myself to them. Another thing that kind of helped me was finding things that I had enjoyed in the past and testing them out. You know, a few things were kind of like impulses that rised up and I tried them out and it didn't quite feel right, so I just stopped. But then recently I did 
drama, which is something that I hadn't done for ages, but I was really good at when I was a kid. And it's just given me this energy. It just gives me energy. And I'm like, this feels easy. This feels fun. This makes me anxious to... It made me anxious to do the tryout, to do an audition for a play, but it was like this exciting angst. Like, you know, I was kind of like excited in a good way, but I was nervous as well, if that makes sense. And another thing that helped me was just to have friends and spend some more time with other people because that makes a big difference. And if you're someone like me who tends to spend a lot of time alone and be introverted and think too much and ruminate and kind of dwell and stew in these negative thoughts, you've got to get out there and spend some time with some people because that can help you change your perspective and it can make you realise, you know, oh, we're all kind of alive. And I realised that I was really narcissistic and that's why I was wanted to take my own life because that's it's a very selfish and cowardly thing to do, you know, because we've been given this life and that's that's pretty special you know we don't we didn't get to choose it but we're here and we get to experience this and we get to choose kind of how we experience it you know like we may get these emotions and these thoughts that kind of hold us back and that don't really serve us and that make us feel like life just sucks and that it'd be better if we weren't alive but you know you don't have to I realise that I don't have to attach to those things I don't have to listen to those kind of thoughts and that I can kind of take steps towards who I want to be rather than listening to the voice and the belief that I'm not a worthy person because that hasn't led me to a very good life so I have to kind of temper that voice out and I have to listen to what I want and take steps towards that so thank you for watching if you did um, I also say that I did watch Another thing that I liked was C-Bum, Chris Bumstead with Chris Williams and their workout and how they talked about feeling the feelings, you know, if you numb yourself from the bad, you numb yourself from the good.